Hi everyone, I'm Kai here. In today's video, we're going to look into the two main approaches for how to separate your code into different folders. We're going to talk about the domain layer in our example and what we're doing, but these are concepts that are true for any system that you work in, so you can take it and apply it basically anywhere. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai. Please pause the video and smash that subscribe button. And when you're back, then I'll give you a quick disclaimer that even though I work at Microsoft, I'm not talking on behalf of Microsoft. Okay, so just a quick recap. So we're working on the Boober dinner application. And basically what we did to arrive at this point is we identified the various entities that we have. Then we looked at the relationship that they have with one another. We identified which ones are aggregates, entities, and so on until everything followed the domain driven design principles that we talked about. If you missed it and this sounds interesting, then I'll link the videos over here. Make sure to check it out if it's something that you care about. Okay, then we took one of our aggregates, specifically the menu aggregate, and we saw how we can take it from this relationship representation on the left and write the corresponding JSON, which includes all the properties. It's checked in. It's easy to always see in a glance what the aggregates in our system look like. Then we wrote the aggregate root, the entity and the value object base classes. So basically nothing is stopping us from taking this entire thing and writing out our entire domain, including the behaviors if we want to, because we did process modeling. So we have everything we need. Okay, now the question is basically, how are we going to structure our domain layer? So let's look at approach number one. This is an approach that's very common. Most of the projects that I've seen inside Microsoft and outside of Microsoft use something similar to this, some flavor of this approach, where basically each type receives its own folder. So we have a folder for the aggregates, for the entities, for the value objects, in the future, we're going to have domain events. So a folder also for the domain events. And then inside each one of them, then basically the corresponding types sit inside. So on the one hand, this is convenient because you want to look at your domain layer and see what different entities you have. Then great, you look at the entities folder and you see everything that you want to see. Also, it's not deeply nested. So basically you have your domain project inside an aggregate folder and inside all the aggregate types and that's it. Okay, so there are some advantages to this approach. But if we look specifically at one of the aggregates, then we see it's basically scattered across multiple folders and different hierarchies. And if we want to look at one of the aggregates, and we want to understand what different domain objects this aggregate is composed of, then we basically like a tree need to go to the aggregate root and start looking inside of the entities of the value objects, see what references what. Now we talked a lot about the fact that aggregates are transactional boundaries, if anything is changes to them. So it's always committed or rolled back as a whole. If it's deleted, it shouldn't affect anything else. It's basically this precious thing that we want to keep isolated. So the question is, why are we taking this aggregate that we crafted so beautifully and dividing it up across multiple different classes across the domain layer with objects that have nothing to do with it? Another thing is that if you want to use the menu aggregate, then you're probably going to add the aggregates namespace because the namespaces are usually based on the folder structure. And now you have many symbols that you probably aren't going to use. And that's true for everything, right? For the value objects, for the entities, when most of the time the entities and value objects that the aggregate is composed of will be used only by the aggregate. Okay, so this is the main disadvantage of this approach where basically we're losing a lot of the cohesion that we would have had if we would have put everything that's related to one aggregate inside a single folder. And that's exactly what we do in approach number two. So looking at approach number two, then we can basically see that each one of the aggregates receives a folder. So here's the dinner aggregate, for example. Then we have here the guest aggregate, the host aggregate, and so on. And if we're looking specifically at the menu that we looked at before, then we see we have here everything that's related to the menu over here. Now, one of the reasons this is great, not only because the opposite of what we talked about in approach number one, is that when you want to refactor, many times you might want to take an entire slice of logic and move it maybe to a different bounded context, maybe to a different system. As the system grows, then we want to move some stuff around. Then you basically have a folder self-contained with everything that you need, and you can simply move it to wherever you want. Okay, now you might be asking yourself what happens with things that really are common. So here, for example, we have a few things that are common, like the average rating and the rating. This is something that both the guest is going to have, the host is going to have, uh, menu is going to have, right? So these are things that really are common. So you can simply go to the common folder and underneath there create whatever common logic. And I like to ask myself, is it really something that's common, that's generic for many components? Sometimes it really isn't and it will be easier in the long run to simply duplicate the same class into two different areas. That way they're not coupled together and each one of them can grow and morph on its own without worrying about anyone that's subscribed 
to that object. Okay, now looking at our application layer next to our domain layer, then we see both the application layer is split by feature and also the domain layer is split by feature. So if someone looks at our system and they're curious to know what the heck happens inside our system, then all they need to do is look at the folders and they can get an idea about what our system is about, where with the other approach where it was splitted by type, then of course it would be much harder. Okay, so I have opened our Boober dinner application and this is where we left off in the previous video where we created our base types and we created our menu aggregate. And over here is what the menu aggregate looks like. I want us to get a feel of what it's like to actually implement the domain layer. So for that, we're going to implement the menu aggregate and basically see what this entails, how we can take this JSON representation and write the underlying aggregates, entities, and value objects. So for that, in the domain layer, let's create a new folder like we talked about before, and let's call it menu. And inside, let's create our menu aggregate root okay and the way this is going to look so public seal class menu and let's make a bit more room over here and this is going to inherit from the aggregate root base class and for the id we're going to create a value object that will can contain the id itself that way we can basically update the id so if we want to change it from a gui to a string or the format whatever it is so we don't have to care about anyone else that is also using this id and update all the other properties so for that let's say menu id and let's create this value object so inside the menu folder let's create a new folder let's call it value objects and inside here let's create the menu id so like we said this is going to be a value object so yes value object let's include the namespace and implement our method that we're already familiar with from the previous video and we'll simply have here a one field that is called value that will contain the id itself so let's say public guid value and let's give it a getter yes let's also create here a constructor let's make it private so only we can initialize it and over here let's create a static factory method for initializing this property so similar to this let's convert it to a block body and let's call it say create unique and basically what it does is it creates a new menu id object okay now that we have this then we can go back to our menu aggregate root include here the correct namespace and start implementing the menu so we started with the id we just implemented it let's create also the name in the description so we have here a public string name and let's give it a getter do the same thing for the description and for the average rating let's say float say average rating next we have the sections so the sections is a list of section entities so for that let's say private read only list of menu section and let's call it sections yes and now let's create this menu section entity so back in our menu folder let's create a new folder let's call it entities and inside here let's create our menu section so let's say public seal class menu section and this is going to be an entity that has the menu section id yes let's get rid of this for now so we don't have this menu section id so let's implement it so we have our menu id and we forgot to implement this method over here we're missing here yield return value okay so we have this let's simply duplicate it and let's call it menu section id so let's change the name of this thing to menu section id and over here let's change every place where it says menu id to menu section id let's see if this works yeah back in our menu section let's include the correct namespace and let's implement one of these sections so we see a section has a name a description and an item so we already have the name of the description let's copy it from the menu yes and we need a list of items so for that same drill let's say over here private read only list of menu item let's make this a bit smaller items yes and let's create one of these menu items so back in the entities let's say menu item and very similar let's maybe copy this entire thing paste it over here change the name to menu item here instead of section let's change it to item 
and let's copy one of these items again change it to menu item id and same drill let's replace menu id with menu item id and now let's include what we need to include great and one of these menu items so we're talking about one of these has an id a name and a description so the id we just created and the name of the description we already copied so great what we're missing over here is of course a constructor to call the base constructor over here that receives the id so let's create that so let's say over here private menu item let's yes let's also pass here the menu item id like so and the menu item id let's pass to the base and let's create again a static factory method like this almost let's say over here for now menu item id dot create unique okay let me just wrap this so it's visible same goes over here okay so basically for now all we're doing is creating something very basic in the future as we implement features and we see that we're missing methods or we need different constructors and so on default values here maybe or an option to pass a menu item id then we'll add it it's just for now to satisfy the json representation that we have so now that we have one of these menu items right we have again the id the name of the description which is this now let's go back to the menu section which sits over here we now have this menu item and we can create basically the public property to retrieve these items so we can say over here public i read only list of menu item and let's call it items yes and it'll return the items as read only okay it's important to note that this returns the current list as read only so if someone casts it back to list then they can still update these items so something you may want to do in your case is say to list and basically create a new list of this and return that instead so no one can manipulate your list okay i'm gonna leave it as read only but of course do it appropriately based on your scenario okay so we have here the name the description the items the id the next thing we want to do is create here the constructor so we looked at it before i'm going to write it and i'll show you the result right same drill exactly and also let's create the static factory method so we're already familiar with that as well so yes as github copilot is suggesting so we have one of these menu sections now we can go back to the menu include what we need to include and from here we know the drill right we need to create a public property for the sections so ta -da. and also we have here the host id the dinner id and the menu review ids now because these are part of different aggregates then what we want to do is over here in the domain project to basically create a new folder like the menu we want to create for the host for the dinner and for the menu review aggregates and inside create a value object folder like we have over here and inside create the id so okay so now we have both the menu that we just created but we also have the host the dinner and the menu review folders corresponding to these aggregates and each one of them inside has a value objects folder and inside the corresponding id right and now all we need to do back in our menu aggregate root is basically create what's left over here so okay so now what we have is we have the host id the dinner ids and the menu review ids that corresponds to what we have over here on the left and we have here the auditing information basically left so public daytime created daytime and or the updated as well like so and now same drill we create the constructor and the static factory method so okay so now basically what we have is we have our menu aggregate and it's implemented based on our schema so we know how to take the idea that we have define the entities find the aggregates make the corresponding json and then turn that into code that should be enough for you to be able to take basically any domain and model it out and we can actually write the entire domain layer and that's what i'm going to do now off camera so let me do that for a second and i'll be back okay so i'm back and basically what we have now is the skeleton of our domain layer so we know how to take the idea that we have 
and convert it into the domain layer. You can see that this is very similar to what we implemented together. One thing I added is we have here the average rating. So this repeats itself both in the host and in other places as well. So like we talked about in the beginning of the video, basically an object that has the logic of how to add a new rating and so on. This is something that's common. So it makes sense to encapsulate it in some shared object. Okay, now it's important for me that you'll be able to follow along if you've been following along up until now. That's why I'm going to upload all the domain models to GitHub. So you can do the same process that we did today and basically take the JSON representation here and model out the entire domain. If you do want the entire code base, then you can support my Patreon. It's $5 and you'll get all the source code of everything that we wrote up until this point and including all the videos that come out in the future as they come out. So I'm uploading the source code so you'll get access for that as well. And of course, it enables me to take more time off work and work on these videos. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new if you're doing this for the first time. If not, I'd love to hear how this is compared to what you do up until now, or if you just have general insights or ways to improve what we have or feedback on the videos in general, then I'd love to hear and improve based on your comments. So that's it for this video and see you in the next one.